In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved Living the Word community. Today we honor St. Anselm, a profound theologian and philosopher, whose life was a testament to deep intellectual inquiry and devout faith. Born in 1033 in Osta, Piedmont, Anselm was initially drawn to monastic life as a youth, but embarked on this path only after a period of secular pursuits. He flourished under the tutelage of Lanfranc at the Monastery of Beck in Normandy, where he eventually became abbot. Anselm's scholarly works, particularly his explorations of the existence and nature of God, and his role in soteriology, mark him as a foundational figure in medieval theology. Celebrated on April 21st, St. Anselm's legacy of faith and reason inspires us to seek deeper understanding and closer communion with God. May his example guide us on paths of wisdom and devout contemplation. St. Anselm was born around 1033 in Osta, a town in the Italian region of Piedmont. His family was of noble lineage, providing him with a privileged upbringing. His mother, a devoutly pious woman, instilled in him a strong religious foundation from an early age. Despite his desire to enter monastic life at 15, his attempt was thwarted by the abbot of a local monastery, who feared disapproval from Anselm's father. After his mother's death, Anselm's spiritual fervor waned, leading him into a period of tepidity and worldly pursuits. Rekindling his early call to a religious life, Anselm left home following conflicts with his father. He pursued extensive studies in Burgundy before later moving to Normandy to study under Lanfranc at the Monastery of Beck, both regions being within France. Here, he eventually became a monk and was later appointed as the prior. Anselm was known for his intelligence, compassion, and ability to handle disciplinary issues among the monks with patience and wisdom. During his tenure as prior at Beck and later as abbot, Anselm penned some of his most pivotal theological works, which continue to hold a central position in Christian philosophy. His inaugural masterpiece, the Monologium delves into a contemplation on the existence and nature of God, offering a rational argument that sidesteps reliance on scripture to appeal to philosophical audiences. Subsequently, his Proslogium introduces the renowned ontological argument for God's existence, asserting that God, conceived as the being than which nothing greater can be conceived, must necessarily exist in reality because existence in reality is greater than existence merely in the understanding. Anselm also explored complex issues regarding truth, free will, and the nature of evil in works such as de veritate, on truth, deliberate arbitrary, on free will, and de casu diaboli, on the fall of the devil. His dialogue on the nature of truth explores various forms of truth, including their relation to the will and intellect. In his writings on free will, Anselm discusses the necessity of a free will for moral responsibility. His most famous theological work, Cur Deus Homo, Why God Became Man, addressed the reasons for the incarnation and redemption, providing a satisfying explanation of why God chose to redeem humanity through a human and divine intermediary. Anselm argues that only a being who is both fully human and fully divine could satisfy the debt owed to God and restore humanity's relationship with the divine. Through the perfect obedience and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, God achieves both the redemption of humanity and the restoration of divine justice. This work is pivotal in understanding medieval soteriology, the study of religious doctrines of salvation, and continues to influence Christian theology profoundly. In 1093, following the death of his predecessor Lanfranc, Anselm was reluctantly appointed as Archbishop of Canterbury. His election occurred during a tumultuous period as King William Rufus had deliberately delayed filling the position to exploit his financial resources. Anselm's tenure was characterized by ongoing conflicts with the monarchy, particularly concerning the autonomy and privileges of the church, ultimately resulting in his forced exile. During his periods of exile, Anselm continued his scholarly and theological work, including his famous treatise Cur Deus Homo. His correspondence and influence extended across Europe, advocating for reform and the rights of the church against secular encroachments. Anselm returned to England in 1100 after the accession of Henry I, who was more favorable towards the church. However, disputes soon arose over investiture and ecclesiastical appointments, leading to further tensions. Saint Anselm remained a figure of moral and spiritual authority until his death on April 21, 1109. Saint Anselm was canonized by Pope Alexander VI in 1494, 
and later declared a doctor of the church in 1720 by Pope Clement XI. His philosophical and theological insights, especially his ontological argument for the existence of God, have had a lasting impact on Christian theology and philosophy. Saint Anselm is the patron saint of those seeking recovery from illness, which aligns with his compassionate nature and his life's work dedicated to spiritual and physical healings. Saint Anselm's life was marked by a profound commitment to his faith, intellectual rigor, and a continuous struggle for the moral and spiritual integrity of the church against political power. His works remain pivotal in the fields of theology, philosophy, and Christian thought, reflecting a life that, despite its trials and tribulations, was deeply rooted in the pursuit of truth and service to God. Let us pray, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, guide us in the pursuit of truth and understanding, just as St. Anselm sought wisdom in his life. Grant us the courage to seek you earnestly, and the humility to accept your will in all things. May we strive to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to serve others with compassion and kindness, following the example of your faithful servant, St. Anselm. Through Christ our Lord, amen.